Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless romans chapter 1 tells us god has revealed to mankind that he is the creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists god demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator and when a society does not glorify him as god he gives them up to three phases of judgment romans 1 verse 24 says therefore god also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil. Verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Verse 32 brings Romans chapter 1 to an end with a very bleak view of human nature. The point of the last half of the verse is to show that many people not only do things that they know deserve death, but also entice others to do them and approve when they do. In other words, the end point of depravity is not just the love affair with sin, but the desire to bring others with you to destruction. It's not just that people choose death for themselves in the passion of sin, but that they become suicidal at the spiritual level and assist others in eternal self-destruction by approving their sin. We are watching this play out right before our very eyes. So I've actually been competing in Strongman since 2009 when I was 17 years old. And in 2013, I won the Amateur National Championship in, in the US to turn pro. Shortly after that in 2014 is when I realized for myself who I was. For so many years I had been ignoring who I was and woke up one day and realized how tired I was. Fortunately, when I came out in 2014, I really learned how special this sport is. There is nothing quite like the strongman community. Each competitor is each other's best supporter. The strongman community is a close-knit community. I mean, we all support each other when we go to competition. I was a little bit anxious and worried about what the response was going to be, especially being in this sport, because it is, it's a masculine sport. It doesn't matter your sex, your religion, your orientation, where you're from, what language you speak, what color of your skin, nothing. The only thing that you need to be in strongman is mentally and physically tough and strong. After coming out, there were some people that I got backlash from and negative comments from, but what I learned really quickly was all of my competitors that I had met over the years of competing were the first ones to go to bat for me and really show their support in an amazing way. 
It really bothers me when people feel the need to abuse others or spread hate based on solely on somebody not living the life to their standards. That bothers me. It's just ridiculous that in this world, you know, 2022, how can that upset somebody for who they are? You know, how, how does it matter to you who Rob's, you know, intimate with, who he loves? For the strongman community, I think he's well accepted. I mean, we just, he's a fun guy. He's a fun guy to be around. I mean, we appreciate Rob a lot. We all support him. We all love him. And, yeah, we're always going to be behind him. Full pun intended, it, it lifted this weight off of my shoulders of this burden I was carrying for so many years. You know, I was able to take that energy and put it into competing and into strongman. My Instagram name is literally the world's strongest gay. So I put it out there really as a reminder to people that sexuality has no bearing on things you can achieve in life. Seeing the very gay Raptor in person and what Ford is honestly doing is one of the coolest things we've seen from, from a global brand like this. You know, I think during Pride Month, especially in June, a lot of companies show their pride, but it's what do they do outside of those other 11 months of the year? I think the biggest thing I want people to realize from this is once you accept yourself from who you are, that really anything is possible. Strong does not have to be physical. Strong is more of a mindset going into every single day knowing you are who you are and living your life as authentically as possible really is the most powerful thing you can do in life. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Psalm 917 The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. A blaze out of control and with no end in sight. Canada's Alberta province is seeing unprecedented wildfires, and they are spreading closer to roads, complicating efforts to contain them. A major highway was closed on Tuesday. There are 71 wildfires in the forest protection area of Alberta. 20 of those are out of control. So far this year, we've responded to 520 wildfires, burning more than 1,017,000 hectares. Last year, that number was 2,200 times lower, less than 500 hectares. Almost 3,000 firefighters are already in Alberta, half of them from the United States. More help arrives later this week from Australia and New Zealand, 
and the weather is expected to finally lend a helping hand, some much needed rain. Alberta is starting to see some cooler temperatures and scattered precipitation, helping to provide some relief to firefighters. We are hoping the weather continues to assist in the fight against wildfires. More than 10,000 people have been forced to leave their homes. Smoke continues to cause poor air quality and reduce visibility. Canada's Environment Agency says people in affected areas should stay indoors or wear respirator masks. Overnight, the U.S. territory of Guam has been bracing for a direct hit from Typhoon Mawar, likely the worst storm to hit the island in decades. As the storm closed in, winds of up to 140 miles per hour were forecasted. The storm capable of hitting with the force of a Category 4 hurricane. You want to stay in the most safe place in your house away from windows. Ahead of the storm, the governor issuing a mandatory evacuation of low-lying areas, telling residents to seek shelter. I am very concerned and worried about your safety, and I want you to take these warnings seriously. President Biden approving an emergency declaration as the military moved planes and ships away from the island. Typhoon Mawar expected to be the strongest storm to impact the island since a super typhoon hit in 2002. That storm causing $700 million in damage. Back on the mainland, just north of Houston, several storms snapping power lines and downing trees in the city of Conroe. A two-story home under construction collapsing. Two men were killed in the collapse and seven were injured. Family members identifying one of the two men killed, Brian Aguilar. No, mi hijo era un muchacho humilde. His father telling our station he had just turned 21. In nearby Huntsville, storms damaged more than 20 homes. A young girl stands in the wreckage of her home. In some places, little remains of the camps outside Sitwe that housed more than 130,000 ethnic Rohingya. Cyclone Mokka has left a trail of death and destruction in Myanmar. 17 people died. 92 houses in our village were destroyed. We are short of food. Someone donated 15 kilograms of rice to our village. Some bodies have been found, but most have not. The current problem is food. No donations have arrived yet, so we are sharing our provisions with others. Since the cyclone, the village has had no food. No one, including myself, has received any food yet. For those who survived, the real struggle is only just beginning. It's hard to know where to start, but slowly they're picking up the pieces of their lives. Shelters being rebuilt from the ruins of those that were destroyed. What people are really asking for is shelter, clean water, food and health and other services. It's about 800,000 people um, that we've estimated, but in gen, I think in, in total, what Ocha has been estimating is about uh, two, around that uh, 3.2 million that have been hit. That's a huge number of mouths to feed, and so far the World Food Programme has only reached 36,000. Some relief is getting through to the Rohingya camps, but many people are worried it won't be enough. Travel to Rakhine State is restricted by the military, which has been slow to issue the necessary permits to aid organizations. The seas have calmed, but it will be a long time before the fishermen can take their boats out again. And farmers are unlikely to get a harvest from rice paddies flooded with seawater. The impact of Cyclone Mokka on the Rohingya community will be felt for years. Towns and villages in northern Italy were cut off from highways, electricity and cell phone service as the result of heavy rains and flooding. The death toll from rains that pushed two dozen rivers and tributaries to burst their banks is now at 14. and More than 36,000 people have been displaced. Vast areas are flooded with roads collapsed and a red alert was issued since more rain could cause river levels to rise again. Okay. This video from Italian firefighters shows rescuers evacuating residents and their furry family members, making sure they had food and generators for electricity. The Italian government says officials from Slovakia and Slovenia have also been brought in to help. The flooding also caused extensive damage to crops and livestock, according to the Washington Post, which are prompting warnings from farmers. The high waters are particularly dangerous because of the drought Italy, along with much of Southern Europe, had been experiencing. It's hard for water to be absorbed into bone-dry soil, which led to the runoff in nearby rivers. 
Climate change, experts say, is to blame and predict more of these extreme weather events because of it. It's too early to put a figure on the financial impact of the recent floods that hit central Italy, although damage can be clearly seen everywhere. On Tuesday, Meloni's government passed the 2 billion euro aid package to help businesses and families that have been affected by the latest extreme weather events. Agriculture is the worst heat sector. Around 10 million plants in Italy's so-called fruit valley have been damaged, with vegetable production being heavily affected. Claudio has been a farmer for over 40 years. He used to manage 600 hectares of land that would generate around 2 million euros per year. As a result of the floods, he almost lost everything. We met him in his office as he assessed the damage. On top of having to pay for what he has lost, he will have to invest extra funds to restart the business. Despite the government's aid package, he's worried he won't have enough money in the near future to pay for existing debts. He took us on a tour to show us how badly the land has been affected by heavy rains. Most of his plants are underwater, but little that can be done to save the crops. Damage to vineyards has been the most significant. Many other farmers have been hit as much as Claudio. The area accounts for 10% of the overall production of fruits and vegetables at a national level. But it will take days for water levels to decrease and several years for the industry to go back to business as usual. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Its name means Smoky Mountain. Right now, it's living up to it. Popocatepetl, a five and a half thousand meter volcano in central Mexico, currently belching out poisonous smoke and ashes. The government's volcano meter is one step away from prepare to evacuate. They're getting shelters ready for the more than 120,000 people in the danger zone. But the clouds of smoke and ash are already affecting nearby towns too. Schools are out because of the contaminated air. Face masks are back. And the locally famous flowers of nearby Atlisco currently look like this. Nothing's escaping the ash carpet. And clearing it away is a Sisyphean task. Every day we have to sweep it up. It really affects us. We have a business selling ice lollies and we have to keep it closed. The ash cloud is actually so thick that we haven't even been able to see the volcano for most of our visit. It's hidden somewhere over there. And that cloud has traveled far enough away that it's even closed down Mexico City Airport for a few hours this Saturday. Despite the murk, scientists have kept their eye on Popocatepetl day and night in this special monitoring center. A full eruption is what they fear, though they stress that isn't the situation yet. There's a lot of ash, but we still aren't at the point of a red alert. Italy's Mount Etna volcano has covered Katanga sky with a thick fog. Europe's most active volcano erupted Sunday, spewing ash over the city and forcing its airports to close. The storm that is battering the island of Sicily prevents a clear view of Etna's crater, which is about 3,300 metres above sea level. The last time the volcano erupted was in early 2021, and it did not stop erupting for several weeks. There has been a dramatic increase in volcanic eruptions around the world, and nobody knows why. You probably haven't noticed 
because nobody seems to be talking about it. But something is going on with the world. Volcanoes are erupting at a faster pace than ever. And earthquakes are going crazy. And nobody has an explanation for it. Nobody except God, that is. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day's signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption, as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Russia says it has crushed a rare attack inside its own territory, an attack that originated in northeastern Ukraine. Two groups are claiming responsibility for the raid, say they are Russian volunteers fighting on Ukraine's side and trying to overthrow President Vladimir Putin. Deborah Pata has more now from Ukraine. The daring cross-border raids into Bilgorod are the most ambitious attacks inside Russia to date. Dashcam video of smoke on the horizon revealed a battle was taking place. First guns were fired, said this Russian eyewitness, then mortars, then the sound of machine guns. The Kremlin said artillery and drones were also used. The group claiming responsibility, the Free Russia Legion, are pro-Ukrainian Russian defectors and volunteers who joined forces with another anti-Kremlin group. Social media images captured an unmarked military helicopter flying low in the area. Other videos shows armed fighters on foot inside Russia and a convoy of military vehicles. Last night, an alleged drone strike on a railway station in the region. Bilgorod is a military hub for fuel and ammunition depots. Moscow says destroyed armor personnel carriers and American-made Humvees were found at the site of the attack. But the State Department's Matthew Miller said he was skeptical of the veracity of reports U.S.-supplied weapons were used in the assault. We do not uh, encourage or enable strikes uh, inside of Russia, and we've made that clear. Ukraine was also quick to distance itself, saying the units acted independently. These attacks unfolded as Ukraine gears up for a much-anticipated counter-offensive. Ukraine's military intelligence chief, Kirill Budanov, said this week that they now have enough weapons, Dana, for that offensive. Luke 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, his nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. A violent confrontation between police and protesters in the Congolese capital, Kinshasa. Protest organizers say the government's voter enrollment process is a sham. They're demanding an international audit of the entire electoral commission. Governing party supporters say they'll resist what they consider attempts to discredit the government. If the opposition call for protest, we will come as well. We are in power. We can call all the forces, including the army and the police, to stop this opposition from challenging the president. Opposition leaders have called for another rally outside the Electoral Commission headquarters next Thursday. But with just seven months to go until the general election, the opposition is worried time may be running out to ensure a fair election. In 2022, more than 100 million people across the globe were classified as refugees. They have been forced from their homes mainly due to conflict, violence, human rights violations or persecution. According to the UN's chief, the terrible truth is that the world is failing to live up to its commitments to protect civilians, commitments enshrined in international humanitarian law. At the UN, the Security Council is debating a report on the protection of civilians in combat zones and is urging members to influence warring parties to respect the rules of war. Last November, states adopted a political declaration to protect civilians by restricting or refraining from the use of explosive weapons in populated areas. 
I urge all states to join and turn the declaration into meaningful action. Water, mud, fat and salt. This is what Shirley Nonsent and her family are going to be eating for the next few days. It is not just her. She lives on 40 mansions in Soleil, one of the poorest areas in Port-au-Prince. Called mud cookies, they are a food of last resort in Haiti and a symbol of the country's deepening humanitarian crisis. We eat mud cookies because we are hungry. We don't have food. It's salty and we eat it. We can drink water and we feel full. Haiti's capital and its slum areas like Cite Soleil are now controlled by violent gangs. As a result, access to food is often impossible. The World Food Program says half of Haiti's population is going hungry. Humanitarian agencies working in Haiti have had to adapt to the ongoing violence. Haiti will never be at peace as long as half of its population requires uh, humanitarian assistance. Violence and hunger continue to spread throughout Haiti. And while the international community discusses possible solutions, those who live here are clearly desperate for any help they can get. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. To the workplace shooting overnight at a factory in Ohio, police are calling it a targeted attack. Overnight, a deadly shooting at this diesel engine factory outside Dayton, Ohio. Emergency responders racing to the scene just before 9 p.m. after calls of an active shooter. There are multiple units there. There appears to have been one male suspect who entered the plant. And uh, at this point, it looks like a targeted attack against one male victim who uh, has been pronounced deceased here at the scene. In Mexico, at least 10 people are dead and nine others wounded after gunmen ambushed a group of drivers at a road race event. The bloodshed happening in Baja, California. The search is on for a group of gunmen suspected of killing at least 10 people in Baja, California, Saturday afternoon. 
The sound of continuous gunfire filling the air at what was supposed to be a peaceful car event in the Mexican city of Ensenada. What happened here yesterday, it surprised us all. I thought this was a peaceful place, but now I realize it's not. According to Mexican state police, a group of men with guns hopped out of a gray van on Saturday afternoon and opened fire at the people at the car show. The city of Ensenada has recorded 26 cases of homicide through April this year, far fewer than the nearby city of Tijuana, which has 598 homicides, according to the Mexican government. The U.S. State Department urging Americans to reconsider travel to Baja, California due to crime and kidnapping and warning of violence between rival cartel factions. This may look like a scene out of of an action movie, but this is real. That is a cop on the hood of a suspect's car, aiming his gun at the windshield, telling the driver to stop. But the guy speeds off with the officer still on the hood. It's as wild a cop chase as you'll ever see. Get the car! That's a police officer on the hood of a car he had just pulled over. His gun is drawn, and he's demanding the driver stop. He hangs on for dear life, as the suspect hits speeds of 60 miles an hour. It began with a routine traffic stop. Officer Patrick McCarty politely informs the guy in the passenger seat that there's a warrant out for his arrest for forgery. Hey, Dennis, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but it sounds like you got a warrant out of Illinois. You got your ID on you? Why don't you step out of the car until we can identify you? Then you can see the suspect push a woman out of the car. Stop now car, he's man. in the driver's Stop seat. Stop the car! Stop the car! As the car moves Stop. forward, Officer McCarty Stop. climbs onto the hood. The harrowing drama is captured on his body cam. Another cop car's dash cam picks up the chase. And look ahead. His escape route is blocked by a moving train. The suspect veers left into an industrial park. Then he hits a ditch. You could see the cop being thrown off. He suffered a broken back. The chase took place in 2021 in Carroll, Iowa, but the video has Stop. just been released. Stop it! Stop the car! The officer we can report has recovered. The suspect was sentenced to five years behind bars. Tonight, one of the nation's preeminent retailers asserting scenes like these are growing more common around the country. <laughs> Target saying they lost an estimated $763 million in lost and stolen inventory last fiscal year and that they expect crime-fueled inventory losses to jump by another $500 million this year. The company's CEO spelling out the struggle on an earnings call this week. Theft and organized retail crime are increasingly urgent issues impacting the team and our guests and other retailers. The unfortunate fact is violent incidents are increasing at our stores and across the entire retail industry. Headlines of major stores closing in San Francisco with employee safety considered. And now the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, announcing a comprehensive plan to tackle the 44 percent uptick in retail theft in his city last year. When someone witness uh, the systemic uh, thefts that you're watching in our establishment, it hurts uh, the entire economic stability of the city. The city also reporting that 327 repeat offenders were responsible for more than 6,000 retail theft arrests in 2022. And other executives at big box stores like Walmart and Lowe's also calling out the emerging shoplifting threat. Theft is an issue. It's higher than what has historically been. I've been doing this for 32 years, and I can honestly tell you we've not seen anything to this degree in the past. And Target says the problem is only getting worse. Target says it's on track to lose more than a billion dollars in inventory this fiscal year, even as locations keep beauty products like shampoo and lotions under lock and key. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. Every characteristic, 
listed after men would be lovers of themselves, illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.